We are back. Tutorial Tuesday is back. Don't you worry. We're not. We're never. We're never gone. We're never gone. Sometimes there's just a. There's just a minute. There's a lot of product launches sometimes, and there's. Oh, sometimes it's gone for just a minute. But we are back. Forgive the uh, office situation. We're just a little bit between offices right now. We're, we're, it's all right. We're figuring everything out. We're going to dive into Photoshop, where we're going to check out the latest updates. This is version 27.0, and specifically, we're going to be checking out the new Harmonize feature. Now, I'm saying you. Photoshop has have Photoshop <laughs> Photoshop has had a harmonized feature in there before in the neural filters which essentially allows you to bring one layer in so maybe a person onto a landscape and then it'll try and kind of match them to the photo so that'll do things like color kind of match the vibe the feel so they kind of blend in a little bit better it was a little bit hit and miss it was sometimes useful but sometimes not as useful as you'd like it to be but with the new AI features that Adobe have been adding in so generative fill and all that kind of stuff Actually, the new Harmonize features are really, really quite powerful. They've just been added in. They've been in the beta for Photoshop for a little while. Now they're in the proper release. Let's check them out and let's kind of use them with some other bits in Photoshop to see how it can actually be really useful for your photos if you want to, you know, if you want to do a little bit of that kind of thing, bring someone into a landscape, bring, you know, an element from another photo into your photo, but make it match a little bit. So we're delving a little bit past photography more into kind of art as a whole, digital art. But this can be really useful, especially if you're doing things like lifestyle photos or something that needs to be used for something. Let's, do you know what? Let's just get back into it. We're back. We're doing it. Let's roll the intro. It's tutorial Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome back to tutorial Tuesday, where we're here on every Tuesday. We bring you a brand new, fresh. Oh, 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 it's still fresh. Don't worry about that photography tutorial let's jump into photoshop i'm going to bring a couple of different photos in so let's actually bring in something that i really enjoyed a landscape from the sony 100 millimeter let's look at something like something like this one here lovely and then let's bring me into this photo as well so we've got me walking down this path let's have a look and see what we can do with that now most of the photos of me that i have are actually not including my entire body, which might be problematic. So we're going to see how that goes. But here we go. This is a reasonably small resolution photo of me. Now, I, I'm probably going to keep it something like that, right? Something like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to work out how we can fix this in Photoshop. Let's bring that in. The first thing we can do, once that's in, you see the resolution is not too bad. We've got this little uh, kind of taskbar down here which is context sensitive so because i've got that layer selected i'm gonna click remove background and photoshop should just be able to cut me out really nicely there we go lovely the next thing i'm going to do is click harmonize so this is part of the new update we're going to click harmonize photoshop's going to take a second and hopefully it's going to help me blend into this photo much better now it should give us three options for how it's done it a little bit like you get with generative fill or generative expand we should get three options to see which one looks the best okay so we have got options here now of course i don't have any legs so that is something we're going to have to fix ourselves but we can sort that this is the first option which i actually think looks really pretty decent let's look at the other options so we've got a second option here a little bit more true to how the lighting was on me originally and then a third option which I do quite like, actually. I quite like this first option, though. Let's go with this first option for now. You know what? We're going to go with this one. Okay, so what would we do next to make this photo work a little bit better? Well, we're probably going to have to select this area down here. So something like this. I'm going to do this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click Generative Fill, and I'm going to type in Bushes. Now, let's generate to see what happens here. And we'll see kind of how, what Photoshop does. But it should theoretically, I would imagine it's probably going to try and generate my legs as well. But hopefully it will generate some bushes. Now, the one thing it has got going for it here is that there is a bit of my leg there to work with. So it should understand the context of what we're doing, which hopefully will be quite good. Look at that. That's great. That's fantastic. Okay, that's actually, that's actually worked really well. We've got three options. I don't like that one as much. I don't like that one as much. But this first one is pretty decent. Now, if this was me, which of course it is, I would then go ahead and do a couple more things. I'm going to crop the photo a little bit, right? Because the photo changes just a touch here to being more of a portrait in the woods. So I'm going to do something like that. Lovely. And then the next thing I'm going to do is go in and do a gradient on a new layer. I'm going to bring this up from the bottom. Something, something like this, right? I've got black to white. And I'm going to do something like this. 
I'm gonna, I've got black to white, and what I've got here is the white I've got at 0% opacity, which I actually think works really quite well, because it means that we essentially get this black gradient coming in from the bottom, and then it sort of fades out. Now, I'm going to bring the opacity of the overall layer down a little bit, but I want to darken that bottom part of the photo, because I think it just looks better. The next thing I might do... I think this is slightly distracting back here. That I just find this particular knot a little bit distracting. So what I might do is come in like this and just go something like this. And we can just go generative fill. I'll leave that blank. Photoshop should hopefully understand that. And let's get that sorted. I'll zoom back out here so that we uh, we get a clear kind of idea of what's going on. That's much better. It's just a little bit less distracting because it was so close to my face. So I actually think that's much better. And immediately, if we look, if we turned off the harmonized layer, so that's what I looked like not harmonized, right? So you can see it's not the worst thing I've ever seen, but it doesn't blend so well with the photo. And all we had to do was click that harmonize button. We've got three options and they all look pretty good. We can still go back and change between them as well. So for example, if we wanted something that's a little bit more like the original photo, that one I think actually works really well as well. But I do really like this one. It gives it a very autumnal feel to the photo as well. So that works really nicely. Let's do something a little bit more tricky though, because that sounds quite fun. So I'm going to bring in an old photo which was taken ages ago. And of course, we've got our subject in the photo already. Let's get rid of her. It's a bit harsh, but let's do that. I'm going to draw around her like this. And what we can do is bring me in instead, which feels a little bit, a little bit much. But you know what? It's, it's all part of the experiment, right? That's what we're doing. We're working out how good this is. So we've done that. All I'm going to do is generative fill. You can see I've done a rough kind of mask around her. Generative fill, leaving that blank. That should remove her from the photo, hopefully. And we've got this kind of nice coffee shop scene. Okay, that's done a pretty good job. Let's look at some of the other options here. Uh, okay, I quite like this one, I think. Yeah, I think this is probably my favorite one. Okay, let's go ahead and bring something in of me. So let's bring in, in this case, this photo is going to work pretty well. Let's bring this in. Okay, I'm going to have to make myself a little bit smaller here. Something like something like this, maybe. There we go. Okay, great. We're going to remove the background. So we're going to click that down here. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, that's pretty good. Not bad. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and place me somewhere like that. Might just bring myself a little bit smaller. I think that looks reasonably good. And then just leaning on that bag, maybe. So something, something like that. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and click harmonize. Hopefully this is going to do a reasonable job of kind of uh, blending me in with the coffee shop vibe. That's remarkable, really. I mean, the amount of difference is done to the lighting, but it, it's pretty good. Let's go ahead and look at a couple of other options. I quite like that one, I think. I quite like that one as well. I think we're going to go with this one, though. Uh, I think that that probably works the best. Okay, let's go ahead and grab this little tool here. And what we're going to do is fix some of the little issues we might have with this. So, for example, I'm going to do this just to try and fix my arm being kind of a little bit, I don't know, it's a bit weird. It's not ideal, is it? It's not ideal. So let's go ahead and do that. Again, I've left that generative fill prompt box blank because I think Photoshop can just work out the context of what I want to happen. Okay, that looks a bit weird, but that is one option. That also looks bad. That also looks bad. Let's go generate again and see how this goes. Okay, that's probably the best one we've had. I guess we're going to go with this one. It's not perfect, is it? But we'll 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 sort of stick with that for now. We might come back to it. Separately, what we're going to do is go ahead and just select this area down here where realistically my legs should be. And we're going to go ahead and do generative fill and just see how this goes now. We might also want to reframe the photo in a minute because uh, I actually think that it because I'm looking off to the right edge of the photo it's a, it's a the framing now becomes a little bit weird. Okay, that's that's not ideal. So we're showing I think here that's not bad. We're showing yeah, we'll go for the middle one. I think we're showing here the limitations of some of this AI, right? It's not perfect, but actually it's not too bad. We're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to bring in this gradient something like this, bring the opacity down. So something something like something like this, okay? I think that looks that looks pretty good. What we're going to do now is come in with a crop here, and I'm actually going to do something like Something like this. I'm going to center myself up a little bit. Okay, I think that actually looks pretty good. 
and we're going to click generative expand which is then going to use essentially generative fill on this area over on the right which is now blank because we've expanded the photo into that area so that should work i think pretty well let's see how that goes lovely we get a nice coffee shop vibe i actually really like that we've got a couple of options i think actually i like this third one and the last thing i'm going to do is actually come in and just grab this area here and just do generative fill in it. it looks a little bit empty a little bit blank and i think i'd like to make that feel a little bit more like the rest of the photo a nice vibe to it so let's see what photoshop actually does with it see i much prefer that we've got a little bit more going on in the background there i quite like that i quite like that i like that first one so we go with something like that that looks really nice i mean look at the difference between this so if we look at the original photo that's where we started and how fast that was and this is us experimenting a little bit as well so just how much we're able to really achieve by doing this i think i do think this is a very very good tool now like i said i wouldn't use this that often realistically but i might use it for lifestyle photos thumbnails for videos uh things like that it's, it's a tool right for a certain kind of job it's, it's like i say delving a little bit past photography and photo editing and a bit more into digital art which i think is something that is important to keep in mind because it you know you got to be honest i think about what you're doing and especially be upfront with your intention and your interpretation of what it is that you have actually achieved this is not a photo i've taken now uh, this is a photo that that doesn't exist right i've used a lot of ai here to create this so it feels more like 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 art but it's it's something i've created for the purpose of uh, a lifestyle shot right which might be useful for something but i wouldn't use it for example to advertise this coffee shop because it doesn't truly reflect the coffee shop it does to a degree but i'd take the i'd take I, it'd be much better to go and take the proper photo for that uh similarly you know i might not use it for uh you know to show off a camera's capability well i certainly wouldn't use it to show off, show off a camera's capability because it's not a true photo but it might be a useful you know lifestyle shot if i was building a website for myself or something like that and i wanted a shot of me you know in a coffee shop and this is what i had to work with or you know something like that it, it might be useful for something like that it's an interesting tool for a job like i say and there might be situations where you want to add someone into a landscape to show some scale or something like that and you just weren't able to do it in the moment and actually maybe this is a great tool to be able to make your life a little bit easier because it's all stuff we can achieve ourselves using photoshop but this speeds that up you know by a ridiculous amount of time so that's quite a useful thing to have in your life as well i'd love to know though would you be using this for anything in particular would you would you find this a useful tool let me know in the comments if there's something you think i've missed as well about how you might want to use this because I think that that can be really interesting. And of course, if there's something you want to see in a future Tutorial Tuesday, let me know because we're back. We're making all kinds of fun tutorials and I want to make sure I'm making the stuff that you want to see. Now, of course, you can check out all the stuff we use for these videos, for everything else over at parkcameras.com. There's links in the description to all the stuff we use for these videos. I will, of course, see you in the next video. But until then, as always, thanks for watching.